Greetings out there in YouTube land. Uh, Rusty and I are finally back on the air. I hope things have been going well for you all. Uh, today's topic by popular demand will be how tremolos work. Hey Rusty, are you going to help me with this tremolo video? I see that your tail is oscillating. I can tell you're enthusiastic. You ready? Come on in. Let's get to work. Good dog. Tremolos are based upon a device called an audio frequency oscillator. The general consensus on oscillation in amplifiers is that it's a very bad thing, but it can be put to a creative purpose. And it's based upon the idea that we're going to take the signal from the plate of a tube and feed it back into the grid. And it will be sort of like a dog chasing its tail in a circle. Now, there's only two requirements for this, and that is that the feedback signal must be in phase. Now, uh, we've seen, I hope you've seen, my video on negative feedback loops in which the signal that's fed back is out of phase and tends to cancel the original signal. In this case, however, the feedback signal will be in phase and will tend to reinforce the original signal. Now this is where our first pitfall arises, and that is, I believe you all know that when you feed a signal into the grid of a vacuum tube, the stronger output signal from the plate will be 180 degrees or exactly out of phase with the input signal. The second oscillator requirement is that the net gain must be at least one. In other words, every time the dog chases its tail, uh, energy is applied to that uh, chasing so that it can be maintained for an indefinite period. If the dog runs out of energy, every loop that it makes chasing its tail, eventually it will stop. So we have to have some gain provided by this system. Now that part's easy. If we use like one portion of a 12AX7 tube, we will have a significant amount of gain to be sure that the oscillation can be maintained. So now let's address the initial problem, and that is that the plate signal is 180 degrees out of phase with the input signal. Now here's how it works. We're going to take the signal from the plate, which we know is 180 degrees, which is perfectly, completely out of phase with the input signal, and feed it back into the grid, but through three successive capacitor resistor filters. And those of you who have seen the tone stack video know that capacitor resistor filters are high pass filters. So we have three high pass filters. Here's one, here's two capacitor resistor, and here's three high pass filters that the signal has to pass through to get back to the grid. Now the beauty of these filters is that depending on the value of the capacitor and resistor chosen, you can alter or change the phase of the signal that passes through. And if we select values for this capacitor and this resistor that will uh, shift the phase of this signal exactly 60 degrees each, I think you see that we can do away with the 180 degree out of phase situation and create a uh, signal that is, after it passes through this filter, 240 degrees out, after the, uh, this filter, we're two, uh, 300 degrees out, and after the last filter, we are 360 degrees of adjustment, which is the same as zero, which is exactly in phase. Now, if the adding of 60 confuses you because you end up with 360, then look at it another way, if it's better for you. And that is, we can take away 60 degrees of phase shift here, 60 degrees here, 60 degrees here. That's 180 minus 180 gives us our zero degrees. Uh, now the signal put into the grid that started up here being completely out of phase is now perfectly in phase. Also, the values that we choose for the capacitor and resistor will determine the speed 
of oscillation. And we can pick values. They're generally around 0.02 microfarads and really high resistance around a one meg ohm of resistance will give us an oscillation frequency of about 0.5 to 10 cycles per second. Now the 0.5 is going to be a very slow swampy tremolo and the 10 is going to be a much faster rate of tremolo. So let's review real quickly. We take that out of phase plate signal, run it through three uh, high pass filters, change the phase of it 60 degrees each time so that we make it exactly in phase with the original input signal. We select values for the capacitor and the resistor that not only give us our 60 degree phase shift, but also control the speed of oscillation and we end up with a oscillator, a phase shift oscillator here that will give us a very slow, low speed oscillation ranging from around 0.5 to 10 uh, cycles per second. Now to make this into a variable uh, rate oscillator, which is the rate switch that we will see on a lot of our tremolos, all we will do then is substitute a 1 meg potentiometer, an adjustable resistor, for one of these three fixed resistors. Then when we adjust it, we can change the frequency of oscillation uh, down to 0 0.5 when we're at a very, very high setting on the pot, high resistance. And when we crank the pot to low resistance, we will speed it up to about uh, 10 cycles per second. So now we have a variable speed or rate uh, phase shift oscillator. And it's interesting to see that the higher the resistance, the slower the speed. Uh, and if we put a high enough level pot here, maybe even 3 megs, we can crank it to the point of high, high resistance that we slow it down to essentially zero uh, cycles per second and we can stop the tremolo. So we can turn this into a rate switch as well as an on-off switch. Now if we want to give this phase shift oscillator a remote on-off capability, we can add a foot switch. We'll connect a shielded cable to the return loop, run it out to a foot switch. The shield is grounded to the chassis, the same chassis ground as the circuit, and when we close the switch with our foot, we will be grounding the loop and silencing the tremolo. When we step on the switch again and open it, we'll unground the loop and start the tremolo. When the tremolo starts, it will be operating at the speed that we adjusted uh, here with our potentiometer that we substituted for one of the three resistors. Okay, so far we've replaced one of the fixed resistors in the high pass filter uh, trio here and uh, created a tremolo speed control. We've added a shielded cable a grounding and ungrounding foot switch for remote on-off capability. And last but not least, let's uh, see how we can add an intensity control to the phase shift oscillator. Now for the tremolo to have effect on the amplifier, the output from the plate has to be fed into the amplifier circuit in some way. And we will see how that's done in just a minute. But all we need to do then is, in effect, add a potentiometer of some sort to this output so that we can control the strength of it and the amount of effect that it has on the amplifier circuit. Okay, so far then we've created a phase shift oscillator that has variable speed, variable intensity, and a remote foot switch on-off capability. Let's see how we can use it then in an amplifier to create the tremolo effect. Now there's two main ways that this oscillator can interact with a circuit to create tremolo. Number one, and the simplest to understand, uh, is that it will alter the bias of either a preamp or an output tube. This method is more commonly used in your lower wattage amps 
like uh, 20 watts or below. The higher wattage amps tend to use a little more complex type of tremolo in which the phase shift oscillator is going to interact with a photosensitive resistor. Now, I will explain that in another video. But for right now, we're going to stick with the simpler method in which the phase shift oscillator will vary the bias of either a preamp or an output tube. Okay, let's take a look at a Fender VibroChamp schematic. First, let's see if the phase shift oscillator is constructed in the method we just discussed. And secondly, let's see how it produces the tremolo effect in the amplifier. Okay, here is the oscillator tube. It's the first half of a 12AX7. We see that the plate output goes through a capacitor, 0.02 microfarad, and then there is a resistor, in this case a variable, thus a speed control resistor to ground. So this is the first of the high-pass filters. Then we're going to go to the second high-pass filter. Now it's a 0.01 microfarad capacitor, and if you come over here you'll see it's 1 meg to ground. So there is the second high-pass filter, and here's the third, another 0.01 microfarad capacitor with a 1 meg resistor to ground. So we have 1, 2, 3 high-pass filters between the plate and the grid to change the out-of-phase plate signal into an in-phase grid signal. We see over here that we have the foot switch and which we come out of the loop. We have a grounded shield out here and when we short to the shield the tremolo ceases. When we unshort the tremolo uh, oscillation will begin again. So far it's exactly like we discussed. I don't see an intensity control yet. Let's see where it is. Let's come out of the plate and go to the grid of the second half of the 12AX7. Now, we didn't discuss this, but this is part of the amplifier circuit, and what this will do will be to amplify the low-frequency oscillation from the 12AX7, the first phase here, the phase shift oscillator, so that it can interact strongly with the uh, amp circuit and give us a powerful tremolo effect. Okay, so we feed this low frequency around 0.5 to 10 uh, cycles per second depending on where our speed control is adjusted uh, up here and we'll feed it into the grid of the second half of the 12AX7 to amplify it even further. Now we don't output from the grid of the second half of the 12AX7 instead we're going to output from the cathode of the 12AX7. And we run down here to what amounts to a volume control. You could look at it that way. We uh, will have an intensity control and how the pot is adjusted. We'll either send the output from the uh, oscillator to ground or as we move the uh, pot more to the right here, the adjustment, we'll send more and more of it up here to the amp circuit. Now, as we look up here at our amplifier circuit, we see that the second preamp stage, which is the second half of a 12AX7, um, is, has a uh, cathode bypass capacitor, and is, the cathode is biased with a 1500 ohm resistor and a 47 ohm resistor to ground. But before that resistor, here comes our tremolo signal coming in here, and it will then alter the bias of the tube, which in effect will raise and lower the gain of the tube just the same as if you took the volume control of the amp, stro uh, struck a chord on the guitar, and then turned the volume control up and down at either 0.5 cycles per second or 10 cycles per second. That input is fed here, the tube will respond just the same as if you were to change the volume control of the amp up and down in a rhythmic fashion. And let's remember that a tremolo is variation of volume and vibrato is variation of frequency. This is strictly a volume alteration in the output of the amp and therefore it is truly a tremolo effect. 
Now let's look at a slightly more sophisticated uh, use of the uh, oscillator to create the tremolo effect, and this is a Princeton reverb amplifier. In the Princeton reverb, we'll not be applying the oscillator output to a preamp tube, but to the pair of 6v6 output tubes themselves. The Princeton reverb, however, is a fixed bias amp. The cathodes of the push-pull 6v6s are grounded. There is a separate biasing circuit that originates down here, passes through a diode for rectification, uh, and produces a negative 35 volt DC uh, voltage, which is applied to the grids of the 6v6s to bias the tubes and to control the amount of plate current at idle. If you notice, on its way to the tube grids, the biasing voltage uh, passes through uh, one end of this 250K pot. On the other side of that 250K pot uh, is a phase shift oscillator virtually identical to the uh, one found in the VibroChamp. The values and design are the same, essentially. Uh, there is the same 3 meg pot uh, speed control. Uh, there is the on-off remote foot switch. Uh, and uh, the output from the plate, instead of going to the another 12 uh, uh, AX7 stage, is fed in here to the uh, 250K intensity pot. And as you can see, when the wiper is over here on the right side, which would be zero intensity, the 6V6s are biased by the DC fixed voltage that would be applied to the plates. As the wiper moves over to the left, which would be an intensity of 10, the tubes are instead biased by this oscillating voltage either uh, ranging from 0 0.5 to 10 uh, oscillations per second and then the output of the tubes or the volume that comes from the tubes that would be heard from the speaker of the amp would vary at the same rate as the biasing voltage that was being applied to them by the phase shift oscillator. If the wiper is in the middle, which would be an intensity of about 5, you'd get about a 50% fixed bias and a 50% oscillating bias to the tube grids. Hey Rusty, Rusty, you gonna help me with this video? You ready? You ready to snap into action here? Oh, what a good boy. Well, that's about it for the bias shifting type of tremolo. We saw how the phase shift oscillator is constructed, uh, what its design principles are and how it functions. And then we've seen how it can interact in a couple different ways within an amplifier to control the bias either of the preamp tubes or the output tubes. We also saw how intensity control, speed control, and a remote on-off foot switch can be added to the circuit. Uh, in our next video, we will discuss how the phase shift oscillator can be used to control more powerful amplifiers uh, and how it will interact with a photosensitive resistor to uh, control the tremolo effect in the amp in a rather different way. Okay, so stay tuned for that. Hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope things are going well for you, and I hope to see you again in the near future. Bye for now.